Yeah. All right, so who's got a really bang up question that we can end things off with? I see one right there. This guy's had his hand up. So you guys left the movie open ended at the time. Were you thinking of a sequel? Yeah, I mean, it happened like the next day, 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, of course. You know, I mean, um, the, um, the powers that be wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for. Uh, Harry Warden or uh, Axel or, uh, or somebody like him to be able to come back. So we left it open-ended. On the other hand, you know, he could have bled to death and died at the end of the tunnel too. So, so, but on the other hand, that has not stopped a lot of people from resurrecting, you know, just because you got your arm cut off and you're bleeding to death. Yeah, but yeah, certainly not in the movies. So anyway, yeah, though we left it open on, uh, on purpose. Uh, we were hoping, of course, that with the special effects, with the music, with everything else, that this is going to be a film that uh, will have worked very well and that people would be uh, falling over backwards to make a, a, a sequel a couple of years later. Could this gentleman get the last question? Sure. What was the toughest scene for you to shoot? Start with Lori. The slapping of it. No, that was my favorite scene. <laughs> um, maybe for myself, uh, because I come from the theater and whatever, the, the idea of shooting out of sequence, and Bob and I were laughing when we were watching the film right now, there was a, a scene that's a, a little moment there where I seem to be in a completely different mode of behavior or, or reactionary uh, whatever that I should be in and that's something that you learn very fast. This was uh, so exhilarating for me to learn, uh, you know, first film to be a lead, it was like a trial by fire but learning, I thought I was learning everything but tonight I'm learning all the rest of the stuff that goes on behind um, but it was a phenomenal education and, uh, um, you know, the few people that had done two films, they were the ones that we, you know, we turned to. They were the experienced people because this was like a very sort of early days in a Canadian film industry and Canadian film boom. And it was really, really so exciting to be a part of it, you know, just to be like the young and the brave and the fearless. And then, you know, to have the leaders like, like we had, like, you know, George and Bob and whatever, Shep hurting us. I do remember one particular moment where Cynthia and I, being the professionals that we were, wanted to get in character for the next scene, and in our high heels and our skirts and boots and whatever, we're running. This is maybe two hours before we were gonna shoot, running back and forth and back and forth in the mine, back and forth, and George happened to stumble upon us and went, <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing? You're not gonna shoot the scene for another three hours and it's called acting and you're gonna have to learn how to do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, learned a lot about uh, the process of filmmaking uh, as opposed to being in the theater and needing to um, hold your energy and do the preparation but wait for the release for the camera and learning about the masters and the close-ups and all that stuff, so um, huge. Uh, huge discovery for me. So that was the hardest thing to, uh, to acquire from my background. Um, I think the, uh, the scenes in the mine and the end when they're being stalked, uh, Axel didn't have a lot to do other than to sort of show up and order people about and act a bit mysterious. I had a, I found that, that tough sledding, um, and at the end too, there were a few scenes at the end and the conclusion where, um, you know, I, I just didn't, I wasn't quite sure where to go with it, so I winged it. Um, the part, the, the scene I really liked doing, had the most fun with, was the punch up in the billiard room with good old Keith Knight, uh, that me and, uh, me and Paul did with, uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun to do. Everybody wants to do a Western, and that was a touch of a Western. And uh, I just thought, I just want to say one more time, I thought Keith did an amazing job in this film. Yeah.
He's the guy I love to watch in this film. Never get, I never get tired of watching him in this film. Yeah. Alf? I don't think I had any particular uh, scene that I found more difficult. It was just keeping the energy of, of Howard up and making it consistent from beginning to end. And, and like I said, doing some, uh, an opportunity to do some improvising, like, you know, snorting coke up your nose, which was beer and all that, and coming up with a dialogue. And I have to say, though, by, that by the end of the film, I don't know about everyone else, but when we got to the, for my last day of shooting, I was burned out. I think that it was, and it was an exhausting shoot because you're working in such a, um, an environment like a, a real uh, mine. Um, and uh, so that, that's really about it. It's just being consistent and, and being truthful to the character that you started out with, that it's, it, it's, on, it's uh, true from the beginning through the middle and then towards the end, uh, to the end, the very end. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was an exhausting shoot, actually. And um, for me, it's especially difficult where all the fight scenes that we had at the end um, even though we had stunt guys, right? There's stunt guys who actually do it in full force, in, you know, at, at the, the right speed and everything, but we still have to do it. And uh, you're doing it just a little slower than uh, the people who are really doing it. And, um, and then Axel and I are jumping from car to car and then hitting each other. And even though they used a, a pickaxe that they designed out of fiberglass, it turned out more lethal because you didn't have the weight to, to carry it. So instead, it just flew through the air. <laughs> it was just frightening. Um, yeah, that was the, the toughest part, was doing all the, all the fights and jumping around. I mean, those are real trains. They really are going at you know, a certain amount of miles an hour. Um, and, uh, you know, anything can happen, it's, you know, that's not planned, for example. But all, all in all, I thought we didn't do it too bad in terms of surviving it and making it look, it looked okay to me. I was kind of surprised, actually. <laughs> there, there's one unsung hero in this, uh, in this piece. His name is Peter Cowper, and Peter plays the miner, the killer, the guy behind the shining light. And uh, he gave a, a tremendously ominous performance. And um, the reason he did that is because, as he said on many occasions, he would lift the corner of his mask in which it was completely fogged, and he would say, Bob, I can't see anything. <laughs> and I'd say, uh, put the mask back on and keep walking. OK. <laughs> so here's to Peter Cowper, the killer. I think we should wrap it up on that note. Um, if, I think you guys should squeeze in and anyone that wants to get a picture, now's a good time. All these guys together. I'm gonna stand yeah, Thanks again, there. everybody. Thanks for keeping the spirit of the working class hero alive and Harry Warden. So, while we're getting a few pictures, um, we're gonna, we'll go get some water for these guys, and upstairs in the top lobby, you can meet them and get some stuff signed. It's quite late, so we wanna try to keep the line moving quickly. If there's someone here that has a long drive tonight, just let it be known, we'll let you go to the front of the line. Uh, Cause I know people came from fairly far away and they brought their swag and their vintage posters and they really wanna get some stuff signed and say, shake these guys' hand for doing such a great job. All right. Let's, uh, we'll meet upstairs in a few minutes, give these guys a, a little break, and give them a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.